Who doesn't love an old historic century home or something that's older and has a ton of character? And that's probably exactly why, because of the character. It's just so nice to see the gables and the Gothic windows and the verandas. You can almost imagine what it's like to live in that era. And they do look super cool, but they do come with hazards, unfortunately. <laughs> You know, I hate to ruin your hope of owning one. I might just do that. I don't know, but it's better to know what you're dealing with, right? So these old places have a lot of hidden things that uh, hopefully one of the owners at some stage has dealt with. And sometimes it's one owner that deals with one thing and then the next one will go through the huge expense of changing the next thing and whatever. If you find one that's fantastic and it's all done, great, great, great. But here are the things, just in case, keep your eyes open when you're looking through a, a, a old Victorian home or uh, doesn't even have to be that old. Old houses in general have issues and one of them being that they weren't subject to the same building standards that we have today. You might go through an old century home and see how low the railings are and I often wonder if people were shorter at that time because it just seems so easy to flip over if you had one too many or something. But that, that's part of the character and the charm of the place, right? Even the door frames seem lower. I don't know, maybe it's in, in our milk today. I have no idea what to make of it. But So one of the things you have to watch for is uh, galvanized plumbing. This isn't an exciting thing, but galvanized plumbing is uh, steel plum, uh, pipes that are that are coated in zinc so that they don't rust. But the problem with galvanized plumbing is that they rust from the inside out, so you can't even see that it's happening. And there can be galvanized plumbing from the street where the municipality has attached water for the house. It can be under your the ground coming into your basement, or it can be visible. And a lot of people have changed over the years to copper, which is great. And some have left that connection there. And unfortunately, where um, this kind of steel attaches to copper, it corrodes, those two metals tend to corrode together and it, you can't see it until it's too late, until you have a leak and da 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 da. So yeah, we know where that goes. So that's one thing to keep your eye open for and if you're not sure what kind of plumbing it is, just scratch off a bit of the surface and if it's copper color under any paint that is there, then you know it's copper, right? And that's what you want to see is copper. And these days you see a lot of plastic, which is fine too, as long as it doesn't say Kitech on there. That's a whole nother video, but uh, so keep your eye open for that. And then another big, big thing for these old century homes is the wiring. And I actually find it so fascinating when I come across knob and tube wiring because it's this little porcelain thing that's the size of a, a big cork, a little bit larger than a cork. And uh, somehow there's tubes going on in there and then there's a wire and you'll see it kind of stapled to the floor joists or whatever, wherever you, you find it. If you see that there, in my opinion, I would run because it would cost you a ton to take it out. And there are a lot of hazards for uh, this type of wiring because they can definitely break down. The knob and tube itself can crack over years, deteriorate and crack. And then even the, the wire has this sheath around it that tends to uh, crumble and just expose live wires. And this type of wiring is not meant to come in contact with any insulation. So of course, people in you know the last century have done a lot of um, insulation and they might just be jamming it in the attic right on top of knob and tube wiring and this is a huge hazard for fires. It's uh, not good. And unfortunately I've also seen that a lot of people will change most of their wiring but then you'll always find that there is a little bit of knob and tube left where they couldn't access it without opening the walls or something like that. So. I would want to see, if they say that they've changed it, I'd want to see proof from an electrician that it was done and it was done everywhere. Oh, if there were photos of proof, that would be great. And the other thing that's bad about this wiring is that insurance companies just won't insure that house. If you find one that does, they're gonna charge you so much money because of the hazard that's associated with it. Another thing you'll see in old houses, not as old as the century homes, but the ones that are in, in uh, the 20th century, the early part, they have a lot of asbestos in stuff, like in, uh, in ceilings, in floor tiles. If you've seen those really hard floor tiles that our parents used to have in the basement laundry room and they would snap, 
yeah, there's asbestos in there. And a lot of people upgraded their insulation with something called UFI. And UFI is, looks like uh, something that came out of your hamster's cage, but it's some of the UFI, not all of it, actually a small percentage of it has asbestos in it. So you, you would have to take a sample of it to a lab or send it into a lab and they could tell you if there's asbestos. And everybody knows, as long as you don't disturb these things, like as long as you don't pull up the floor tiles or go in the attic and you know play in the insulation, uh, it, it, as long as it's undisturbed, it's not a danger. But if anyone does any kind of renovations, there's even a coating that they used to put on pipes as an insulation. And if that's cut off and disturbed by someone who's not a professional to deal with stuff like that, there's also asbestos in there. It's kind of scary. Also, the old popcorn ceilings. And um, there's a lot of new popcorn ceilings, but the old ones that are from, um, you know, the early 20th century, they, if they're removed, scraped off, it's a hazard. So somebody would have to do it as a professional because there's also asbestos in there often. Back then, um, houses didn't have regular heating, right? A lot of them had wood stoves and sometimes you can even see that old pipe hole going through the wall. It's filled with bricks. I always think that's so cool. But a lot of them have big fat oil tanks in the basement or outside. And if they're not to code, they're, they're very expensive to replace and the insurance company doesn't like to insure that house. Again, as soon as they hear oil heat, you have to jump through a bunch of hoops and a lot of regulations because um, new oil tanks have three gauge side. So it's hard to explain what that means, but the skin around them is, is safer for avoiding leaks from happening. If you ever have a leak, what a catastrophe, it's an environmental mess and very, very expensive to, to clean up. So oil tanks is not a good thing. It's not, I mean, I have bought a house with my husband where we, we just changed the old furnace and oil tank into propane. So that, that is an option, but it's not a cheap option. It's just something to keep in mind. Um, and the old houses also, they went for, gosh, decades and decades without having any kind of air conditioning. So air conditioning, of course, takes humidity out of the air. And so they have gone for decades without taking humidity out of the air. And I don't even want to think about, you know, what that means. Old houses also might be in an area that is protected uh, for heritage reasons, historic value. And if you're in a place like that, or if your house itself has one of those plaques on it that says, uh, Dr. So-and-so lived here in 1885, that's a really cool historical thing, but it's a pain in the neck when you want to do renovations to the outside of your house. You have to follow a whole bunch of regulations and um, preserve that old style that that beautiful, maybe Victorian house had, whatever the case may be. And that, that can change people's plans really, really fast. So just more hoops to jump through. I think I have covered it all, but I stress that home inspection comes there's, there's no there's no replacing a home inspection, especially for this kind of a house. Unless of course the person has done a pre-home inspection with all those things, but keep those things in mind. They're super duper important. And oh, I didn't even mention wood rot. My gosh, it's probably the biggest one. But have you ever gone into one of those creepy basements in an old century home? When I have clients go down there, sometimes I just say, go ahead, <laughs> go ahead, I'll wait here. The stairs are so steep and creaky and wood and the, the spider webs and uh, it's not for me that the soil it's usually a soil bottom sometimes some people have upgraded to a concrete uh, pad but this the uh, foundation is usually made of field stones or something equally as you know not good for letting water in hint hint so have a look down the basement and if the wood looks like it's crumbling and falling apart that's not good. And usually it's, 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 if you take a piece off and it doesn't snap, it just kind of rubbery. This is uh, not something you want to see, but it's, it's just isolated to a spot that's wet because wood rot needs a certain temperature and it needs moisture. So the good news is it doesn't spread. It's not a fungus. It, well, it comes from a fungus, but it doesn't spread uh, to other parts. So as long as it's dried up, it's not going to get worse. And you know, as long as it's not holding your house up, you you uh, you can repair it. It's not too 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 expensive. 
depending on how much you have, of course, but also watch for termites. And it's hard to tell the difference between termites and wood rot, but there aren't a lot of areas in Ontario that have termites. Unfortunately, Toronto does. I know that's shocking. You'd think in the big city the termites would take off, but nope. Um, but I don't, I haven't seen it uh, in any areas that I've ever done business so far. But it's hard to tell the difference, but termites look more like little smooth tunnels and uh, the wood rot looks like chunks of wood is just rotted and fallen out. So, and then it, and it's crumbly. So it's a little bit of, it doesn't matter, both of them are terrible. And whatever section of wood is damaged has to be replaced and repaired. So get a home inspection, but uh, if you're gonna get one of those big houses, just please keep it up and make it look great because it is nice to own a piece of the history of Ontario. Thanks.